This is a Sports Catastrophe production. Hey there, Heather Ho there. It's Jeff Cutter Diver welcoming you to another Sports Catastrophe birthday boy. And if I join for today, April the 29th, is a tennis legend who was a number one player on the men's tour. He won eight majors and won an Olympic gold medal, which is nice. He was the second man in the Open era. From the, well, back in, before 1968, the four majors, you had to be a professional to play in the majors. But now they had the Open era where they would have more amateurs and all that. So he became the second of five men to do the career Grand Slam in the Open era and the fifth of eight overall to do so. In fact, he was the first man to get the career Golden Slam, meaning all the Grand Slams, and at least and an, at least an Olympic gold, one Olympic gold medal. Agassi, well, I guess I said his name became the first man to win all four singles majors on the three different surfaces, and is the most recent American male tennis player to win the French Open, which he did in '99, and the Australian Open in 2003. But Andre Agassi was huge in all that. Agassi was born in Las Vegas to Mike Agassi and Betty. Mike was a former Olympic boxer from Iran. Anyway, Agassi was sent to Nick Bottelieri's Great Tennis Academy in Florida. He was supposed to be there for three months and all that. He was supposed to be there because that's all his father could afford. But Bottarelli says that take your check back. He's here for free. And, you know, Agassi became a professional by the age of 16 in 1986. He actually won his first match. Lost his second match to Max Wielander, but it's Max Wielander. By the, by the end of 86, he was number 91. And then he ended up being number 25 in the world in 87, which was pretty good. Top, almost top 20. In 1988, he actually set the record for most consecutive victories by a male teenager, but that would be broken by Rafa in 2005. He actually ended up being number three in the world in the, by 1988, behind only Ivan Landel and Max Wielander. So I was like, holy crow. And all that. Agassi actually didn't play the Australian Open for the first eight years, and it was like, what the heck? It's like, dude, you could have won like a lot more Grand Slam Australian Opens. Although he was his, it, the Australian Open was his most successful one. Anyway, Agassi actually for a couple of years actually refused to play at Wimbledon because of the events traditionalism because of the predominantly white dress coat. Not the first or the last person to hate that. Anyway. It was a matter of time before he became a Grand Slam champion. All that. He went to his first Grand Slam final in 1990, but lost to Andres Gomez. And then, that's the, well, in his autobiography, he said that he lost to Andres Gomez because he was worried about his wig falling off during the match. Because allegedly Sampras had some hair problems, and then he would wear a wig. Why the heck would he wear a wig on the court? On the tennis court. <laughs> anyway, Agassi would lose the U.S. Open in 1990 final to Sampras in three sets. But that started the Agassi-Sampras rivalry, which was one of the best in the 1990s. Anyway, Agassi actually helped the Americans win the Davis Cup. That's basically the Tennis team tournament for nations. He did it beating Australia. Anyway, in 91, he would get to the final of the French Open, but lost to Jim Courier. There was actually. Yeah, he looked pretty good, but because there was a rain delay at the French Open, he lost to Courier. Anyway, in 92, he ended up winning his first Grand Slam final, taking care of Goran Ivanisevic in a five-set final. 
he beat Boris Becker and John McEnroe on his way there. It was like huge. In fact, he became the first major baseline player, as in, you know, he didn't go, he stayed on the baseline in the back line to hit his shots and all that. He wasn't a serve and volley guy like Sampras or Mac. But yeah, he did, a, well, he did okay. He got the U.S. 92 U.S. championship. Anyway, you know, he did everything. You know, he rose to the top by 94. He was hurt. He was unseated, but he won the U.S. Open beating Michael Chang in a five-set. No, he won the 94 U.S. Open over Michael Stieck. Like, he was unseated, but remember, seeding in tennis was 1-16, to 16, not 1-32 to 32 as it is nowadays. In fact, Agassi shocked a lot of people by shaving his head and actually ditching the wig and basically embracing his style. And the funny thing was, it helped him win the 95 Australian Open. Well, it was his first time at the Australian Open, but he won it. He beat Sampras. It was a huge one. Agassi and Sampras would battle each other five times in finals in 95. Agassi winning three of them. Agassi famously won the Canadian Open in Montreal against Sampras. So yeah, actually had a 26 match winning streak. But Agassi lost the US Open final to Sampras. That ended the streak. Agassi said that he couldn't take his eyes off that loss. But in 95, he was the world number one until November. So. You know, he skipped a lot of the fall indoor season, and that meant Sampras could pick up the points. Agassi had a great year in 95. He only lost nine matches out of 82, and won the Davis Cup again. Agassi would have a lot of issues. And all that. He did win, though, the Olympic gold medal in tennis in Atlanta, taking out Spain's Sergei Bruguera. Unfortunately, Agassi had some issues. He had a wrist injury that resurfaced, and then he would actually start using crystal meth. Anyway, he failed an ATV drug test and said that, you know, his drink was spiked. He was getting a, a warning, but of course the letter was a lot. But that actually got him to quit crystal meth, which was great and all that. Agassi was in a failing marriage with Brooke Shields and lost interest in the game. In fact, that marriage problem was huge because Brooke Shields was in an episode of Friends who was playing a um, obsessive fan over Joey's character in Days of Our Lives, and Agassi would destroy his tennis trophies over that thing. His ranking fell to 141 by 1997. However, he would condition himself, get himself back into physical and mental shape, and it looked pretty impressive. He actually went from one number 110 in 98 to number 6, which was amazing. He would win five titles and all that. He was named Most Improved Player of the Year, obviously. So after defeating Andre Medvedev, in 1999 at the French Open. In fact, Agassi being the last, not just the last American, the last non-European to win the French Open for men. He became the fifth male to get the career Grand Slam. You know, winning all four majors. Rod Laver, Fred Perry, Roy Emerson, and Don Budge before him. And then joined by Roger Federer, Rafa Nadal, and Novak Djokovic, of course. So yeah, so Agassi did his job and all that. He got to the Wimbledon final in 99, but lost to Sampras. But he won the U.S. Open over Todd Martin, winning two of the four majors that year, which was great. And then he ended up number one, becoming the first player not named Pete Sampras since 1992 to do so. He would win the Australian Open in 2000 over Eugenie Kalitnikov in a fourth set final. In fact, he was the first male player since Rod Laver, Rocky, the Red Rocket as they call him, to, to
Methuselah in 1969. It was actually shocking because I thought for sure Sampras had it been to four straight finals, but I guess not. So anyway, it was just amazing what he could do. So anyway, he did win the 2001 Australian Open over Arnaud Clement, who shocked a lot of people by getting there. Patrick and kind of had Patrick Rafter retire from tennis. Although Patrick Rafter would get his revenge at Wimbledon in the quarterfinals beating Agassi, Rafter famously lost to Gorin in the final. Anyway, Agassi would lose a tight match with Sampras, a four-set match that no breaks of serve, meaning that when they had the ball on the racket and served the game, they got it. He was ranked number three. He was injured and couldn't compete at the Australian Open. Agassi and Sampras would face off in the final of the US Open. Sampras won in four sets and put him a, a 2014 advantage in their 34 career meetings. But a lot of people were shocked because that was the last match Sampras would ever have. Agassi kept going. He beat Rainer Schuttler in the final of the Australian Open and got his eighth and final Grand Slam title. And then in April 2003, he was number one, becoming the oldest top-ranked male player since the ATP rankings at age 33 years and 13 days. Roger Federer would break that record. So anyway, by 2006, he was just slowing down in a bit. He would... He would face Benjamin, well, he shocked a lot of people by beating Margulis Baghdadis, who was ranked number 8 in the second round. Agassi would lose his match to Benjamin Becker, no relation to Boris, of Germany in four sets. However, Agassi would get a massive standing ovation from the crowd in New York and would give a retirement speech saying that he's lost a lot of things, but he's found the fans. And of course, you know, the agassi Sampras rivalry, one of the greatest in tennis history. Post-retirement, he's done some charity work and all that. He's done, he's done some stuff and all that. He actually coached Novak Djokovic for a little bit. He was a baseliner. He had a lot of business ventures and endorsements. Personal life. Agassi actually dated Barbara Streisand for a little bit. It was shocking. But he was married to Brooke Shields from 1999. Of course, that kind of had some issues because of the Friends episode. But he ended up marrying Steffi Graf in Las Vegas, with the witnesses being their own mothers. They have two children, Jaden and Jazz. So, you know, they're not tennis players either. So yeah, it's weird how Andrea Agassi could have Steffi Graf, and Graf is a legend. He wrote an autobiography talking about some stuff about his childhood and his Armenian father, because he was demanding and emotionally abusive to the whole family. Yeah, there'd be a lot of things. Agassi actually said that he hated tennis during his career because of the constant pressure on him. He wore a hairpiece for much of his career, and Pete Sampras was robotic. Yeah, so he's done a lot of things. As I said, he won eight Grand Slams, 92 Wimbledon, 94 US Open. 95 Australian, 99 French, 99 US, 2000 Australian, 2001 Australian, 2003 Australian. So, yeah, he's done lots of things. Anyway, you know, winning Australia Open on his first attempt. Only Jimmy Connors, Rascal Tanner, Vitas, Gurulis, and Johan Craig did that. He played at 21 straight U.S. Opens from 86 to 2006. Nobody's even done that. That's a touch that. Never Sampras. Oof. 
So yeah, he's got some good legacy and all that. So yeah, Andre Agassi was pretty good. And you know, his matches with Sam Price were even better. Anyway, I'm Jeff Diamond, I do.